In exercise 5, we're gonna search for an optimal solution by using goal seek and by using the solver. So over here it's a goal seek and solver. So I've opened already the answers so that you can actually see the values uh, while I'm uh, illustrating it. We've made uh, a few adjustments we need for some of the exercises. The first thing is that uh, we have an area where the distribution center should uh, stick to. So if you go and have a look at the, the picture, you see this rectangle over here showing the area where the distribution center can be located. And then you've got this green dot over here representing the forest. We'll be using in exercise E. So the first thing we're going to do is use the goal seek. So you can, it's, it's a what if, so can use it with ribbons, but I'm gonna keep to the tabs. So goal seek. What do you want to find? You want to figure out if you can go to a distance of 485 by changing the horizontal position. So we're gonna set the the total distance. We're gonna find try to find 485 as value. And we're going to change the horizontal position. So if it starts, you see all the numbers running. You see that we are now at iteration 40 and a bit. It's going to keep on going until 100. And then it says us it may not have found a solution. So what we see is that we get to a current value of 458,61. Uh, so it's it's close, but it's not exactly what we were hoping for. And you see that the horizontal value is 68 and some. And well, it's almost 69. And what uh, that's the values we have over here, right? We've put them in the solution. And um, so we didn't really find the thing we were looking for, but it came close. So with the goal seek, there, there's a limited uh, amount of options. You're gonna do a be able to do a lot more with the solver. Now for Mac users, you will need to download the solver. So you go to Prankari, there's on the links next to all the screen costs, there is a solver for Mac. You get to this screen where you see that you can get solver 2008 or 2011. And once you download it, you have this solver package that you need to install. And once it's installed, you go back to Excel, go to Tools, go to Add-ins. And in the Add-ins, you should be able to select what you've downloaded, selected the solver. So in my case, it's already selected, so I'm gonna cancel it. Once it's installed, there will be a new label here called solver, and that's our interface we need to do the exercise. Oops. Um, there were still the values we had earlier on, so let me delete everything and I'll explain you what we're going to do. Again, we want to set the object, so it's always going to be the total distance, so just select the total distance here. But now we're going to change the horizontal and the vertical value, so I'm going to select both of them. App. And then I'm going to run the solver, so that's actually exercise. Minimize total distance by changing position of the distribution center, horizontal and vertical. Okay, so if I click on solve, you don't see anything. Now it's going to run at the back, but it's going to pop up this small window. But when it's popped up the small window, it actually changed the values you want to uh, change. So in our case, it changed the horizontal and the vertical values. And that's the values you get down here, right? with a total distance of 486. So it's almost the same as we had with the goal seeker. Okay, so you have two options. You can uh, keep the solution or restore to the original values. We're gonna keep on restoring the values. And you can create reports. So in our case, you should actually create an answer report. Now I've already have it over here. So I'm just gonna restore the original values and click OK. So now it's back to 1730. A quick look to the answer report. You see that it shows you the cell it, it worked on, the original value and the final value. And it shows you uh, the 
cells you want to change also the original and the final value. That's it. With the solver, you are capable of doing a lot more complicated things. So in the next question, we ask to make sure that this position stays inside our boundaries, because you see 69 is actually outside our boundaries, because the minimum boundary is 70 for the horizontal value. So we open back again the solver, and we are going to give that as constraints. So I'm going to add a constraint saying that our distribution values should be smaller or equal than the maximum values, which are so maximum values, that's this. Yep. And the distributions values should be bigger or equal to our minimum values. Hop. Okay. Uh, seems okay. And if I now run solver again, I'm gonna get different values. So you see 70 sticks, and now it's got 30 and a bit as the upper, as uh, the vertical uh, position. It's not as optimal as before, but it's at least between our constraints. So that's what we have over here. Uh, not over here, the next one, 70 and 35, 30,5. So that's, Again, what we wanted. Again, we've made a report out of it. Let's go to question C. Minimize the total distance by changing the position of the distribution center and the deliveries for the customer, but the distribution center should be located in the municipality. Also, the delivery should be smaller than the demand and should be bigger than zero, blah, blah, blah. Let's actually just try a little bit out so you can actually see what happens if you don't have enough of the constraints. So what do we want to do? We also want to change the delivery. So I'm going to make this a little bit smaller and bigger and add. So you need dot comma. Oh, no, that's not what I want to add. I want to add the deliveries from here to here. That's it. So now I also calculate the deliveries. If I do it like this, you will see that it actually creates very crazy numbers. I think it's, see, it's minus, minus, minus. It's not exactly what you want, right? So restore the original values. Get the solver again. So the second thing we really want is we add that the deliveries should be smaller, uh, bigger or equal to zero. Okay, I'm gonna do it again. So what happens now? Well, what do you think the best solution will be? Everything zero, of course. That's actually exercise D. So because, I mean, if you don't have to deliver anything, then your distance is of course zero, <laughs> not what we want. Okay, so we're gonna add another constraint. What we really want is that the, uh, so we're gonna add it, that the total is equal to the maximum value. Okay. Solve it now. It still gives us so the next thing you see is that it says, Oh, we're gonna it's just gonna take 12 deliveries of one person. But you see that customer D actually only has six demands. So again, it's something we need to add. I'm gonna restore it again. Now we need to make sure that of course you don't exceed the demand. Solver, add another one. We say that this demand is always uh, bigger or equal to the deliveries. Could have done it the other way around. And now we should actually get some interesting outcome. There you go. So what does it says? It says it's gonna take one of A, five of B, none of C, and six of D. So it still takes all of D, but now it actually takes more of the others as well. And you get to distribution center in 74, 
and 20 so it's again in a corner um, and the total distance will be 318 so that's exactly what we have over here so you saw that all these restrictions were needed and you go to 40, uh, 74 uh, horizontal and vertical 20 with 318 of total distance and a distribution of uh, deliveries from A, B and D. So that's exactly what we find. Okay, I'm gonna restore them again. So in, in C we actually also uh, have included uh, a sensitivity report that shows you the reduced gradients and a limit support to, sh to give you extra information. Can I have a look at it? So that's for uh, question C. So question D, I kind of already showed you that if you don't have one of the constraints that strange things happens, like if the if the max could be if the total number of deliveries can be smaller than the maximum, then of course it will be zero because then you have the lowest possible distance. Now we're going to include the forest, right? So minimum, uh, we're going to minimize the total distance by changing the position of the distribution center. Um, but the other thing we're going to do is we're going to add a forest. The forest is located at this uh, uh, horizontal and vertical position. And we, want, we need to make sure that we stay away from the forest with a radius of 18 centimeters. So just consider it another constraint that there cannot be any industrial um, activity in a radius of 18. Um, yeah, well, 18 from the from the forest. Again, we need to calculate the distance. That's just like in previous exercise, right? And now we need to have this distance as an extra constraint. So we're gonna again go to tools to the solver. Now in our case we don't need the deliveries anymore, so we're gonna delete the deliveries out of it. Okay. Um, which means that we don't need these, these, and these. We still need the the area we want to keep our location in. Um yes but 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 need to close it again because what you see is not only do, did we add forest to make some interesting uh, outcomes we actually change the the deliveries of the customer and we're gonna make the area that we can locate in a little bit bigger now i've already prepared it for you by creating a scenario so you see that scenario QA will actually change the deliveries and the the the, the distance so if I well, I'll show you on top here so this will change and this will change show Oop, there it is and the other thing is for we have three different questions in each of the question we're gonna start at a at a different position so I've prepared it already for you. So the first distance is 104 and 44 vertical. You see that it's outside the um, area we actually can locate in. Um, but the reason we want to do it with three different cases, I'm gonna close this. The reason why we want to have the solver solver with three different cases is because you see that the starting position will actually have an effect on where you can locate it. So the first answer will be 49 and 40 with a total distance of 469. Is that correct? Mm, nope. Probably I forgot something. Oh yes, of course, of course. I need to restore. I forgot the distance of the radius tools solver so we had the distance of the of the area but we don't have yet the distance so it says that this distance always needs to be bigger or equal to the radius there you go 
and solve it. That's going to be the answer. 49 and 40, is that okay? Is that what we find? That's what we found as well. See? So I can show uh, you this with, with all the other cases. So I could uh, restore it. Okay. Then go back to scenario and get the starting position of the first distance. So now it was 140, 44. It's going to change to 17, uh, 62. I'm going to close it. I'm going to run the solver again. So everything here stays the same. But what you will see is that it's, we are not going to get the same answer. You see, so it's a different answer. I'm going to cancel it and I'm going to just show it you down here. You see that if we start at these three different positions, we get three different outcomes. So you see that you don't really exactly know the the best position. The solver is only something that gets close to it, but doesn't really, uh, is, is not bulletproofed, right? So you see that if you try it three times, you see that when you start at 70 horizontal and vertical 62, oh, sorry, you actually get to the most interesting total distance. And that's that.